Um, Zoe, is it true that you have a new passion in life? Are you obsessed with ghosts? I've accepted the fact that like, I, I see things and I hear things. And Wait. Colorado Springs man accused of stabbing his mother before lighting her house on fire was back in court today. Court documents say Yurashka Graham confessed to killing his mother, telling police he was possessed by a demon before committing the crime. Carity News Channel 13, Sean Rice is live at the El Paso County Courthouse with what we're now learning about this case. Heather Yurashka Graham claims he was possessed by a demon after having a conversation about religion with a friend of his. Today I spoke to that friend who didn't want to be on camera, but told me Yurashka killing his mother makes no sense to her. Colorado Springs police respond to Cheyenne Road on reports of a house fire and find a dead body. In the 12-page affidavit, investigators detail a jail phone call where Yurashka says a friend named Marion Fagan allegedly put a demon inside him. When officers interviewed Fagan, she said she gave Yurashka a crystal ball to, quote, help clear himself. I went directly to Fagan to ask her about his comments. He was possessed by a demon after an interaction. Um, here at your house. Fagan did not want to be filmed, but spoke to me for 30 minutes on her porch. She said she talked to him about coming to Christ. She said he accepted Christ and left in the early morning hours. Court documents also reveal a confession to a jail guard. Yurashka allegedly said, quote, I want to confess to a crime. I know that I killed my mother. When investigators interviewed Yurashka, he told them, quote, I was possessed by a demon. Drugs made me do it. A man accused of stabbing a young girl last week also appeared in court today. That happened last Thursday near Sahara and Hollywood Boulevard. Police say the four-year-old girl was stabbed 11 times. The man accused, Alan Wilson, told police he knew her and he was trying to save her life by getting the demons out. Zoe, is it true that you have a new passion in life? Are you obsessed with ghosts? I hear you are. It's not really a new passion. Okay, we're just finding out. You're just kind of like finding out. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I've I've accepted the fact that like I I see things and I hear things. And Wait, do you really? Things. You've had like experiences? Yeah, a lot of wow. them. A lot of them over the years. Like even as a child growing up, like I remember being like getting ready for school when I was eight years old and there was like you know those ducks that like is like the duck thing that you pull it's a toy yeah um there was one of those on the dining room table and I started walking and it just started like going alongside me and I was like interesting mm -hmm. um and I kind of shut it down for a while because like it's scary like it, yeah the unknown is scary so you, you can't yeah. But I recently was like, no, this is like a gift and like something that I have the ability to do. So I'm going to lean into it. And I recently did my first like real paranormal investigation, like with equipment and everything. What Went equipment? Like a flex capacitor? Like what are we talking about here? Like what <laughs> What kind of equipment? There's a lot. There's, there's so much on the market, genuinely. What? But like my favorite thing is called a spirit box. Okay. And it basically scans radio frequencies really quickly. You okay. want to do it in like more of a rural place so it doesn't peak pick up stations. Um, and like if you put on AM, it just sounds like static. But something about the electricity that it creates allows spirits to speak through it. Oh. Um, and I, I mean, was, the earth is all, we do have frequencies. Earth exactly, has its own frequency. exactly. Okay. So I was sitting at a, a, a tombstone in a graveyard with my best friend. Because that's what we do. <laughs> that's what. <laughs> well, if you're trying to find ghosts, yeah. like, you know go what? to the graveyard. <laughs> yeah. Um, and is this I at nighttime? Sitting, or? Yeah, nighttime, pitch black. <laughs> wow, we're different. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we found this one tombstone of a spirit that we were told is very playful. Oh. Um, so I turn it on. I'm like, hi, Sam. I'm Vanessa. This is Gigi. I'm like, I'm not very good at this. I'm like, you're Sam. <laughs> I am so <laughs> into then, doing and this. Then, wow. And then Gigi goes, Sam, can you tell us our names? What are our names? And then we just hear, shh, Vanessa, shh. No. No. Yeah. Did you run then? No. <laughs> No, I was like, cool, do you have anything else that you want to tell me? And I just hear, shh, no. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool, well, thank you. Uh, you have to like tell them to stay because you don't want spirits to follow you. Or do you? No, you don't. <laughs> no. No. We're no. trying to live like, you know, yeah. without that. So we don't yeah. need that all the time. Um, Wait, so if you, if, okay. If you were a ghost, do you think you'd want to, I would follow people. I would follow people. I'd just be nosy. 
I feel like I would be the ghost that like turns on Billie Holiday. <laughs> yeah. In the middle of the night. That doesn't sound creepy at all. <laughs> like I love it though. Music. I love creepy. And was hearing voices when he came to the door of a complete stranger at a stately home here in Leesburg. Quote, my client thought he was God and was stabbing the devil and saving the world, Wasiki's lawyer said. What started as a conversation about religion turned into a stabbing spree inside an apartment building in Carrick. Brianna Smith reports the victims say the suspect claimed to be their savior. Police say 33-year-old Rami Jazim stabbed three people in one of the apartments. Neiser says they were talking about religion when all of a sudden things turned violent. He says Jasm claimed he was Jesus, grabbed a knife and started stabbing people, harming residents and leaving neighbors in disbelief. You never know what's going through the brain of people. Um, Jesus Christ, that's a surprise to me. Investigators say this man, Anthony Long, was taken into custody soon afterward in an unrelated case. Close to three months after the fatal shooting, Long is now charged with Terry Weaver's murder. Roger Swan says he had a family connection with Long. He's always thinking he's Jesus. Thinking he was Jesus? <laughs> yeah. Something wasn't right about him. He just had a bad sense about him. You can see him just walking back and forth there on the phone. At one point, Pucci also began talking about demons. Talking about his soul. <laughs> the St. John's County teen who's awaiting trial displayed bizarre behavior during his latest court appearance. Pucci, who is 14, is charged with stabbing 13-year-old Tristan Bailey to death back in May. So the 14-year-old made bizarre statements in a pretrial hearing this morning. At one point, he was heard mumbling on the phone about demons. Records show Fuji had a notebook with satanic drawings. His girlfriend told investigators he would hear voices in his head that would tell him to kill people. A forensic psychologist who is not affiliated with this case. He, he definitely looked disoriented and confused. Um, it's hard to know whether he's feigning mental illness or if something's really happening with him. From my perspective, he, it seemed genuine given that pattern of behavior today and then what else we know. Well, a man says he threw a child off a third story balcony in the Southeast Valley because he believed that she was a demon. Police say Sunday, Jarek Willis allegedly threw a five-year-old girl from a third story balcony at the Boulder Pines apartments because he believed the child was a demon. The child's mother said she and Jarek believe in African spirituality and on Saturday he said he believed the girl was full of bad spirits. Willis's family, who all live out of state, described him as a great man and say he has a daughter of his own and served several years in the Navy. They are all shocked. It makes me think that the man is suffering from mental illness or possibly drug intoxication. Willis's family said there was no previous mental illness problems.